I'm going to be talking about some work on identifiability and also estimation of subsampled and mixed frequency structural VAR models, vector auto regressive models. And this is joint work with my advisors, uh, Emily Fox and Ali Shoja at the University of Washington. So let me first uh, motivate our kind of a toy problem that motivates this work. So imagine you're observing two time series, the, the blue and the red, and you're observing them over time. And the goal here is to estimate some sort of structure of causal dependencies between these two time series. So one that perhaps the true underlying data looks something like this, where we have the, the top time series x1 up there, and then the bottom time series x2. And it seems like we have some lag dependencies between x1 and x2. And we also have some instantaneous uh, dependencies between x1 and x2. So the, the arrow that goes from, say, x4, 1 to x4, 2 is this dependency um, at instantaneous in time. And these, um, these lagged or the diagonal arrows are, uh, indicate causal dependencies um, across time steps or lag time steps. So there's a bunch of you know, methods out there that can learn this diagram from these kinds of time series. But what happens if you have subsampling? So what happens if you don't observe data um, at every other time point, OK? So here I introduce notation where I, I call it the subsampling rate. And in this example, we have subsampling rate of k equals 2. Can we learn this structure? Or what if we have a sampling rate of k equals 3, a subsampling rate? Can we still learn this structure? And additionally, we're going to look at uh, mixed frequency time series. So that's where you have one uh, time series that's observed at um, the, uh, the baseline sampling rate, and then you have another one that's subsampled. And then you can have combinations of these two where you have mixed frequency and subsampling, where you have one that's you know, sampled at every other, and then one that's sampled at every third. So we're going to have, in this case, we're going to have a k is going to be basically a vector that indicates the sampling rates of both, of both time series. So it turns out that there are a lot of causes of subsampling and mixed frequencies in practice. Uh, so one, probably one of the most common reasons that this might occur is due to costly data collection. So if you have, for example, GDP, this is recorded on a quarterly scale, so every three months. And the reason that is is because it's very expensive and takes a lot of time to record what the GDP is. And same with housing prices, other econometric indicators, biomarkers, you can't have people coming in. You know, every hour you're going to only see them whenever they come to the hospital, something like that. And also, you might have technological limitations. So, like fMRI or EEG are going to cap um, sample neural activity at fixed rates, but there's no reason that the the true causal scale that we want to study is actually at the same rate that we're recording data. So this this work looks at how we can still estimate the causal structure even if we have a disconnect between the sampling rate and the the true scale of the data. OK, so our work builds on previous work by Gong et al. in 2015. Um, and they study what's called subsampled VAR models with independent errors. So the basic model they're looking at here is this, this linear vector autoregressive model of order 1, which I have a schematic at the bottom. But that just says that we have xt, which is a vector, equals a xt minus 1 plus some error term. And so the, the, the causal interactions here are going to only occur across time steps, right, that I have indicated here. And that those are going to be encoded by our matrix A. But a key assumption that they have is that the errors are independent. So they're not going to be able to look at causal structure that's happening at the instantaneous within, at a, at the, within a time point. So we're going to be extending their framework to deal with uh, most mixed subsampling. So different time series can have different sampling rates. and correlated errors. So we're going to hopefully be able to learn structures with observed data that I've indicated on the bottom of this slide. And I just want to say that structural, and OK, let me get to that. Um, so to do this, we're going to study what's called the structural vector autoregressive model, also termed SVAR. So what is this model? It says, it's similar to the previous one. It says XT is going to be equal to some matrix A times xt minus 1 plus c uh, times some error. So here, 
A is as before the transition matrix. C is now our structural matrix that um, gives us the instantaneous causal effect. And the error term is called the instantaneous errors. In the econometrics literature, it's called shocks. Basically, what are the kind of econometric shocks to our system? Right, and so just kind of schematically, the C's give us this instantaneous interactions, and the A's give us this, these lag interactions. Okay, so in our case, we want to study how we can estimate these when we have subsampled data like this. And at this point, I just want to emphasize the importance of um, being able to detect instantaneous causal interactions. Um, so structural of our models are a huge area of research in econometrics and are used a lot in policy analysis. So how can you, to help you determine, like if we change the economy or we do something, how will that maybe affect things in this time step that we, that we introduce these changes? So right, we want to look at this in the subsampled case. So we're going to collect, we're going to collect all the data that we observe and call it X tilde, right? So the, the true data that we don't observe is X. We're going to say X tilde is what we observe. And then we're going to combine them all together into this big collection X tilde, capital X. And that's, so that's going to refer to our observed data here under subsampling. So it turns out that we can, in a particular case when we're just looking at subsampling, and we're going to use that to build our intuition. So that's when all time series are subsampled at the same rate. We can rewrite our, the evolution of our process in this form. X tilde T equals A to the K X tilde T minus one plus L times this E tilde T. So what this says is, is a evolution equations for our data at the subsampled scale, right? So here we have A raised to the K power because we've had subsampling at say rate K. And then, so as you can see this, the form of this also takes a structural var form or it looks similar, right? We have this A matrix or A to the K times the past times some matrix multiplied some, by some errors. But in this case, the matrix L is actually this big matrix that is a concatenation of smaller matrices, which is C, A, C, and then all the way up to A, K minus 1 and C. So it turns out that A and C are not actually identifiable from the first two moments of our processor. Um, and this implies that it's not identifiable if our errors are Gaussian. So some intuition for why this might be the case is you see in this, this matrix, at the, this evolution equation at the top, we have A raised to the kth power. And it turns out that matrices um, are not the kind of the square root of a matrix or the nth root of a matrix is not unique. So that, that might give you some intuition for why this result is going to hold. And so the Gong et al. paper were the first ones to point this out, but they didn't also point it out when you have correlations. So how are we going to deal with this problem? So we're going to follow in the footsteps of this gong paper and instead try and harness the higher order moments of our errors to get at it identifiability and estimation. So we're going to instead look at non-Gaussian structural vector autoregressive models. So now we're going to assume that our error terms are non-Gaussian. And basically what this, to get all the theory to work and what's pretty common in the kind of ICA literature or if you're familiar with LinGam and some other kind of causal structure algorithms for in not, when you have non-Gaussian models, we're going to assume that uh, the error terms are independent across uh, dimension. Also that each error term is non-Gaussian and we have this distinctness assumption where the, uh, the, error, the distribution of the errors are going to be different for each, uh, for each dimension as well. And so if you have that, then there are a few results in the literature already for structural VAR models that if you have no restrictions on C, then C is going to be identifiable. Uh, if it can be permuted to lower triangular, then the, the, the directed acyclic graph and its ordering associated with C is identifiable. So that's a bunch of uh, work down here. So all of these are pretty recent. So our goal here is to combine these kinds of results and estimation methods with uh, the problems in subsampling, which I'll get to now. So in the subsampled case, we're going to refer to a parameterization of our model as A, as the collection A, C, E, and K, where A and C are the parameters, E is the 
error distributions, and k is a, a subsampling, right? And remember, k can be a vector here if we have mixed frequency. And so identifiability in this setting is a map, basically, between the joint distribution of our observed data, x tilde, and this representation, a, c, uh, errors in k. So the general proof technique that people use to prove identifiability results um, in these kinds of models is that you're going to show that if two parameterizations, a, c, e, k, and a prime, c prime, e prime, k, lead to the same distribution of x, then you're going to have basically equality between these two parameters. So we're able to prove something similar to in this case. Um, let me walk you through what this theorem says. It says, suppose that our observed subsample data is generated according to a structural bar process, given that parameterization, and it also admits another representation. And under these assumptions, A1 to 3, if you remember, those are assumptions on the error distributions, independence, distinctness, and uh, non-Gaussianity. Then we have these three results. The first is that C is going to be equal to C prime, where P is a permutation matrix with 1 and minus 1 entries, meaning that at the very least, C is this instantaneous, um, this instantaneous effects are going to be identifiable up to uh, permutations and sign flips. And furthermore, if C is lower triangular, so if C follows, a, if the instantaneous effects follow a DAG structure, then C is going to equal C prime. And furthermore, if the distributions, the error distributions are asymmetric and C is full rank, then we're going to have uh, equality between the parameterization. So A and C is going to equal A prime C prime. So there's an easy corollary from this, which is that if the instantaneous interactions follow a DAG structure, but you don't actually know what the DAG structure is advanced, then the DAG structure and its ordering is also identifiable from X tilde. And this mirrors a lot of the results from LinGam and other identifiability results for inferring DAG structures when you have non-Gaussian errors. But it's interesting that these results kind of hold even in the subsampled case. Great. So now I'll quickly uh, outline our approach to estimation. So we're going to take a Bayesian approach, a model-based approach based on a Gibbs sampler. So one common thing in the econometric literature is to model these errors as a mixture of Gaussians and with two components. So it's basically the simplest thing you might try. Uh, so what this means is that we're going to introduce these binary indicator variables, Z, I, K, which tell you which mixture component you're from. So each error distribution is going to be you know, either from a normal mu1 or tau1 or from mu2, tau2. And furthermore, the extra component is that, the, the next component is that we're going to treat the unobserved data in X as missing. So our sampler will basically impute these mixing values, these missing values. The general outline of the way the sampler is going to work is we're going to jointly impute missing data. Basically, we're going to sample x, the missing data, and these latent indicator variables z um, from their conditional distribution given our observations x tilde and our uh, parameters. And once we have that, then we basically have standard conditional Gibbs updates for our parameters. The one tricky part is actually sampling the structural matrix, but there's a paper that has recently come out by Wozniak et al. in some econ applied econometric journal um, that actually develops a pretty nice way of sampling C. It doesn't have a closed form kind of a standard conditional distribution that you might be able to use with Gibbs sampling, but you can sample it almost exactly in practice. So here are some, just a quick demonstration of, uh, this is ongoing work, something that I've only recently got working, but so I did a quick simulation with a sampling rate. It actually is a sampling rate of three, that's a typo, so it should be k equals three. And uh, I have, so I'm assuming that the, right for now, I'm assuming actually that there's no instantaneous interactions. I still haven't gotten the, uh, that part of the sampler working yet, but um, we have a t equals 403, but that, that, so that's the number of time points, but in reality the number of observations is one third of that since we have a sum sampling factor of, of rate 3. So what I have here is I've run the sampler for you know, a bunch of times and then I've estimated the density of the samples of um, 
this time series. So basically, the red line is the true value, and the, the black curve is the estimated density from the sampler. So what, what this is showing is that we can actually get pretty good um, estimation results under this under subsampling using this Gibbs sampler for this model. Um, so what, what's nice about this is we can both get estimates of the, of the value and also uncertainty estimates if you want to do hypothesis testing or anything like that. So just to recap, what we've done is we've extended the identifiability results of Gong et al. to structural VAR models with mixed subsampling. It allows instantaneous covariance and interactions. It allows us to identify the structural matrix and transition matrix under non-Gaussian errors, and we've developed a Gibbs sample for uh, inference. And currently ongoing is we're still trying, uh, running experiments on the, the inference procedure. So thank you very much. Thank you much, Alex. Thank you.